Okay, this was the problem I actually left you with last time. Um, I hope you had a chance to have a look at this. Anyway, look, what we'll do now is work it together. So what I want to do first is actually find the total impedance in this circuit, the impedance that this signal source over here sees. Well, we're going to call that ZT. So ZT is equal to, it is the 1K, and then it's plus this impedance over here, which is the minus J 1K. All right, if we convert that into a polar representation, this comes out to be 1414 at an angle of minus 45 degrees. Okay, having calculated ZT, we are now able to actually calculate the current in this circuit. We can call that current, let's say IT. And IT then is going to be equal to our voltage source over here, which is what? That's 10 at an angle of 30, and that's divided by the impedance in the circuit ZT, which is this 1414 at an angle of minus 45. All right, so if we actually do this, then we come up with a value of IT being 7.072 milliamps, and of course my angle here is going to be what? Well, this 45 is brought up to the numerator over here, changes its sign, and so this is going to be, what, 75 degrees. All right, now if we kind of just plot these, or the value of, let's say, the voltage V and the current IT, what's it going to look like? Well, let's just go ahead and do that for a moment. So our graph would look like this, uh, where we would have V. I'll show that here. This is V. And my angle over here is what? It's 30 degrees, so that's the V. And then, of course, the IT, well, that's sitting, let's say, up here like this. So there is IT, and this angle here is the 75 degrees. So from here to here is my 75 degrees. Now, what we're interested in really is the angle difference between this current and this voltage over here. Okay, so the apparent power, S, is equal to a voltage source V multiplied by IT, but it's the complex conjugate of IT. The complex conjugate of IT is simply equal to same magnitude, 7.072 milliamps, but the angle, of course, is a minus 75. All right, so let's do this. So that apparent power is equal to V. What was V? That was a 10 at an angle of 30, and that's multiplied by this complex conjugate of IT, which is, what, 7.072 uh, milliamps at an angle of minus 75. Now remember, the reason for taking that complex conjugate was so that we're reflecting what? The angle difference between this current IT and this voltage V. Okay, and so that's why we did that. All right, so continuing this a little bit further, we have that this apparent power is really equal to, so we're multiplying this by this, so this is what? 70.72, and what is that? That's a milli and it's volts amps being the unit. And of course the angle over here would be that 30 minus that 75, which gives me a minus 45. Now look, this minus 45, what does that actually mean? Well, look, it really means that the load here, so we can write this down, the load is really a capacitive load. So that's a capacitive load. A little later on, we're going to formalize this, but this is actually referred to as a leading power factor. And we note that it's a leading power factor because that current IT is really leading the voltage V. So when the current in the circuit IT leads the voltage V, the voltage of the power source V, we say we've got a leading power factor. But we're going to come back to that a little bit later on and we'll formalize that. So now let's draw our power triangle, okay? 
Okay, what do we have? Well, <clears throat> looks like this. We have the apparent power, okay, looking like this. So this is S. This value here represents what? It represents the reactive power, which we use the symbol Q. And this value over here, well, that represents the, uh, the real power, the true power. So we'll call that P. And then, of course, this angle over here, what is that? That's that minus 45 degrees. Okay. So look, what are we trying to find here? Well, we know the apparent power. There it is. Let's see if we can now, knowing this triangle, we can now find what? We can now find the real power. We can actually find the reactive power, Q. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we can say that this power, P, real power, is equal to what? Well, it's equal to the hypotenuse over here, S, multiplied by the cosine of minus 45. Okay, and what is that equal to? That is equal to 7 or 70.72 milli VAs times the cosine of minus 45. And if we work that out, that comes out to be 50 milli watts. That's an actual power dissipation. It's a true power, it's a real power dissipation. Q, the reactive power, what is that? That is equal to, again, S, which is the 70.72 milli VAs times the sine of minus 45 degrees. And if we work that out, that comes out to be a minus 50, and that's a milli VARs. That's volts, amps, reactive. And once again, this minus sign here is simply indicating that the load is a capacitive type load. So the reactive component, having a minus here, indicates that it is a capacitive load. Okay.